Hi guys, this is Arkel here, and as you can see from the title, this is going to be a video all about anime and manga eyes. Now, however, I'm going to say right off the bat that this is not going to be a step-by-step -step video on how to draw anime and manga eyes. Um, when you are just starting out drawing anime, chances are the first thing you want to learn is how to draw eyes, because, you know, that catches everyone's attention. But uh, if you're like me, the first thing you did was watch step-by-step -step anime eye tutorials. Yeah, and though these can be great and they can be really, really helpful, the problem that I had was that even though it showed me how to draw one anime eye, it didn't really tell me like where it goes on the face, how big it should be, or how it will affect the appearance of the character whose face it's on. So I wanted to make this walkthrough, I guess um, you could call it, uh, about the basic um, basics of anime manga eyes before I get into like a step-by-step -step video showing you how to actually draw eyes. Uh, this way you'll be pre-informed about the basics of anime eyes and you won't have those unanswered questions that I did when I first started drawing out anime. So, alright, there's going to be a lot of information coming at you, so I'm going to jump right into it and I'm not going to waste any time. Um, since this will be more like an explanation video and not so much a how to draw tutorial, um, you won't be really seeing me draw anything. Um, I've already drawn everything out, so the video will not be three hours long while you watch me draw all this stuff. So uh, here I go, I'm going to get right into it. Alright, the first thing I want to tell you about anime eyes is that they can all be broken up into basic shapes. Uh, if you're a beginner and are having a hard time understanding just to how, just, you know, how to go about drawing anime eyes, um, try looking them, at them in basic shapes. Um, here you can see just some of the uh, shapes that appear in anime. Um, there's a circle, an oval, square, an ellipse, a reverse triangle, a rectangle, and a reverse trapezoid. You can see that over there. Yeah, so of course th these are just the common shapes and there are many more and combinations or alterations of the basic shapes that you can use. Um, but you can see here that just by changing the basic shape of the eye it can give a totally different feel. Now, remember that the most important thing to know about anime and manga eyes is that they don't really have to like abide by the laws of real eyes. Um, in anime, eyes can be square and triangle shaped, um, and many other weird shapes too. Um, I definitely encourage you to draw as many different shapes for eyes as possible, um, rather than always just sticking to one type. Um, I'm not really sure why, but in some anime, I tend to notice that all the characters have the exact same shape for eye, um, for their eyes. And, um, you know, sure they might be bigger or smaller or, of course, different colors, but the overall shape is kind of exactly the same. Um, it's your artistic choice, of course, to use one shape or many shapes, but I definitely, definitely encourage you to, you to use as many different shapes as possible, um, because if you don't, uh, you may encounter the dreaded same face syndrome. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's very common with anime. And that is basically when uh, all the characters' faces are too similar and it's hard to tell them apart and this is something that's really common with anime and I personally am trying to make sure that all of my characters are all unique and don't look too similar to each other. Um, of course it can be a bit difficult because so many aspects of the face in anime are not emphasized like the nose and such um, but the eyes can be as simple or extravagant as you want them to be uh, so let that be a reason to make them a very different. The next thing I want to say about anime eyes is that for as many shapes of eyes there are, just as, just as many, if not more, ways to detail the irises. Um, I refer, refer to this as the pupil style of the eye, or how the inside of the eye is drawn. Um, you can see here as I go down this list that each of these eyes have been drawn with a different pupil style. Um, some with pupils, some without, um, and some with more or less emphasis on the pupil itself. 
Just like the shape of the eye, the style of the pupil is also an artistic choice that you can make. Um, again, there's nothing that says you must draw the inside of the eye the same way for every character, so I definitely encourage you to play around with pupil styles as well. Now, I bet you're wondering, like, Arkel, what type of pupil looks good in what type of eye? Or, how will the pupil change the look of the eye? And these are all really good questions, and that's going to be my next topic. Um, not only does the shape of the eye change the appearance of the character, um, the pupil style also can affect the character. Here you can see that I have six drawings of the exact same character, with the exact same eye shape. However, all of the insides of their eyes has been drawn in a different style. Um, even though this character has the exact same face, uh, how do the pupil styles make them appear different? I've changed their eyebrows. You can see um, the difference uh, more apparently. Um, it'll convey the emotions that the character has based on their pupils. Um, over here, you can see that tiny pupils can make the character appear rather harsh and angry, while really large and soft pupils can make them appear cute and innocent. Not only should you pay attention to the shape and size of the eye, you should also pay attention to the way you draw the insides of the eyes as well, because they can immediately give insight onto that character's personality. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is how eyes can affect the appearance of gender. Tell me, what gender do you see this character as? Does your opinion of this character's gender change a lot because of the pupil style they have? Something I hear a lot from people is, how do I draw female eyes or how do I draw male eyes? This itself is a good question, but what you have to remember is that there's absolutely nothing, nothing that says the shape of the eye indicates gender. Both boys and girls in real life do not have drastically different shapes of their eyes. Therefore, in anime and manga, they do not need to either. The main differences between eyes in regards to gender are not related to the shape at all, but the size of the eye, the pupil style, the size of the iris, and the amount of detail in them. To reaffirm my point, uh, you probably thought that at least one of these drawings looked like a female and the other one a male and yet they have the exact same eye shape. Let's take a look at the common differences between male and female eyes. As you can see here, these are the exact same eye size and shape, only drawn to be either in a generally feminine or masculine way. Female eyes tend to have a larger iris compared to their male counterparts. Their eyebrows are also a lot thinner and less defined than males. And of course, uh, the eyelashes and the darkness around the eye um, are more emphasized and appear to be more typically feminine, of course, as we perceive femininity to be. Now, of course, these are the very basic differences between typical feminine and masculine eyes. But it is very, very important that you understand that not everyone of one particularly binary gender will follow this pattern. Um, I can't stress enough that though one gender may follow a particular pattern, the traits are not absolutely exclusive, meaning that in theory, a male can have larger irises or longer eyelashes, and females can have larger eyebrows and shorter eyelashes. You know, if you want to have an interesting and unique character, you need to understand that things are not black and white, and that making your characters a mix of both of the commonly perceived feminine and or masculine traits is what can make them different from the rest. Again, there's nothing that says you have to follow the set of general rules. They are just there to help guide you in either a more feminine or masculine direction. Uh, of course, I wouldn't just say that without proof, so here we have three different eyes, all in the same shape and size with different pupil sizes or more or less detail around the eyes. Now, as you know, less detail around the eyes makes them appear more feminine but smaller pupils make them appear more masculine. So on the top row we have less detail around the eyes, um, and on the bottom we have more. Because these are both a mix of feminine and masculine traits, these eyes in theory could belong to either a female or a male. Um, it's up to you to decide what would suit the character you are trying to create and whether or not a more feminine and or masculine appearance to the eyes would make sense. Now, what happens when we take what we know about pupil styles, eye shape, male and female traits, and characters, and mix them around? Uh, here I have another six drawings of the exact same character. 
Now, I purposely made the other features of this character somewhat androgynous, so you can see how drastically just the pupils and the detailing can affect how we perceive gender.